Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a seamless chevron design using Affinity Designer for iPad. Now while I am on the iPad version of the app, if you're following along on the desktop, as long as you know where the corresponding tools are located, you should be able to follow along. Are you ready? Let's get started. There's nothing unique about setting up the canvas for this design. I just want to make sure it's the right resolution for my print on demand sites and that it's one that a motif can easily be divided into. So I'm going to create a 3600 pixel square canvas set to 300 dpi with a color format of RGB. Once that's in place, I want to turn some guides on and create both a vertical and horizontal guide in the middle of the canvas. That's going to give me something to snap my nodes to. So I'll go up to preview mode up here and tap on the right side. I'm going to choose guides settings and I want to tap a horizontal and vertical. I'm going to change this to red just so it's a little bit more easily seen. And with that in place, I'm going to go to the right of snapping, choose snapping options. And I just want to make sure that snap to guides is toggled on. Now, this is probably one of the easiest motifs to create and one of the easiest uses of the pen tool. I'm going to select the pen tool and I don't need a fill. I'm going to use just a black stroke that I'll set to 50 pixels so you can see it. And I'm just going to start tapping out nodes that follow this guide. I'll start down here at the bottom left corner. I'm going to tap the middle line here. I'll go up to the top and then back down to the middle. I want to tap the bottom right. Now I'm not creating a house here. I actually want to start going up into the middle. So I'm going to go up to the middle here and then tap to close that shape out. Now the iPad can be a bit fussy when it comes to snapping nodes in place. So I like to select the node tool and you can already see I have an issue here. I'm just going to drag this down until I get that green and red line. I'll do the same thing with the other nodes, just making sure that they're exactly where I want them to be. And that way I know this is going to tile perfectly. Okay. I am going to turn this from a stroke to a fill and I'll change the color to this deep teal. Now this is much too big. I want to scale this down to something that will divide evenly into 3,600 pixels. So I'll go to my transform panel and I'm going to lock the aspect ratio and change this to 600. I'm going to bring this motif up to the top left corner so that half of the top and half of the side are off. And I'll go ahead and duplicate this using the quick menu, go down to my transform panel. And I want to move this 600 pixels to the right, so horizontally on the X axis. I'll tap that and plus 600. And as long as I don't deselect this, I can hold my finger down and use the quick menu to power duplicate this across the rest of the canvas. I'll go ahead and select that entire row. And once again, I want to duplicate it. This time I want to go down on the Y axis but I only want to go down 300, not the full 600, because I want them to tuck themselves into these little cutouts here. So I'll tap on the Y axis, add 300. And again, as long as I don't deselect, I can use the quick menu to power duplicate this down the rest of the canvas. Now at this point, there are a couple different directions I could take. I could select all of these, use the vector flood fill tool and quickly change every other motif. What I want to do though is select all of them and use the offsets tool to scale each motif down, leaving a little bit of open space. So I'm going to use my move tool to select all of them. I'll select my contour tool and I'm going to change the radius to minus 25. I want to set these so that if I do scale this up and down, that radius doesn't change. So I'll go up to the top to the contextual menu and choose convert to curves. Now I'm going to set a rectangle behind this. I'll just drag out a rectangle across the entire canvas. And I'm going to change this to this off white color, grab my move tool, and I'm going to move that all the way to the back. And this is a tileable design. I could call this done if I wanted to, but what I want to do instead is once again, select all of my shapes here in my layers. And I'm going to use the vector flood fill tool to change random motifs to different colors. So I'm going to tap on this first one, go all the way to the top here and two finger tap to select all of them. Close my layers panel. And I'm going to select the vector flood fill tool 
You always want to select the tool first and then select your fill. The first time you use this in a canvas, it's going to give you this really bright red color. Otherwise, it's going to use the last fill that you used. So I'm going to tap in here and I think I'm going to pick this yellow color. And I'm just going to randomly tap out different colors. If I tap one on the edge, I need to make sure that I complete it on the other side. The same thing with top to bottom. So I'm going to do this one, which means I need to do this one. Now I'm going to speed this up using random colors and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, I've gone ahead and changed my colors. Now, whenever I do something like this, I do like to test the design just to make sure that I don't have anything clumping or there's no big spots. And you can see that I also use the off-white that I use for the background to create some open space here. So I wanna make sure that that looks okay as well. So what I'm gonna do is grab my artboard. It's important you select the artboard layer, not the individual layers underneath. And I'm going to go to this pattern hub that I've set up in my assets panel. And at the bottom here, I have a testing subcategory. So I'm going to add asset from selection. And as soon as that's in place, I can add another artboard and test the design. I'll go up to the documents menu here and choose artboards. I'm just going to tap this plus sign because I need one the same size as my original canvas. I'll select my gradient tool and go back to my assets here. I wanna make sure at first though that this artboard is selected. In my assets, I'll just tap and set that to a fill. It's going to set it exactly as it is on the other one, but the benefit of this is it's a bitmap fill that's automatically tiled. So I can hold shift down on my command controller here and scale down and just see how it looks at a smaller scale. And I really like that. I don't see any weird clumping. I do see an issue though, and you can see that right here. So I did not complete the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead back to here and find where I missed, and it's right here. So you can see I have this purple one, and I didn't complete it over here. So I'm just going to go back to my original artboard, and this is the importance of testing the designs before you load them onto print-on-demand sites to make sure you have everything in place. So I'll grab the vector flood fill tool, and again, it has that off-white because that's the last one I selected. And I'll go ahead, I'm not entirely certain which purple here I use, I'm just going to sample that. And I'll make sure I tap this side. And let me just make sure there's no other issues before I move on. All right, everything else looks good. So I'm gonna go back and select the artboard. I'm going to delete this from my testing because I know it's not working right. And then once that's deleted, I'll go ahead and re-add this and then test it. All right, now I can just select this second artboard and my gradient tool. I'll tap to add this and it automatically updates it in the same scale I already have it. And it looks like everything's fine. I'm, I'm liking how this looks. So I'm going to go ahead and call this one done. If you have any questions or a suggestion for a seamless pattern or any topic that you'd like to see covered here on the channel, let me know in the discussion below. If you like my teaching style, check out my full length classes, including my pattern toolkit classes on either my Skillshare channel or my own learning site, The Creator Collage. You can find a link to both below. I have lots more tutorials on the way, but in the meantime, you might wanna check out one of these two next. Thanks for watching.